Buenas noches, soy el Capitán Rivas de la Inspección de Policía. A la orden, mi Capitán. Yo soy Sánchez, encargado de las operaciones en tierra. ¿En qué puedo servirles? This is Mr. Stafford, the American FBI. He'll be aboard tonight with a guest. Oh, are you expecting any trouble, sir? No, I'm here to prevent it. Mr. Stafford is taking a prisoner back to the States tonight. Well, perhaps you would like to look through the plane, sir. No, thanks. I'm only interested in the people who go aboard. Murphy's had plenty of time to make some good friends here in Madrid. I'd like to have the manifesto handy when the people check in. By all means. Incidentally, I think it would be a good idea to have them over an hour before takeoff time. Will you have some of your men check the exit? Every one. Thank you, officer. Thank you, sir. Going over the extradition papers, I noticed that your Mr. Murphy was Lieutenant Murphy with 53 bombing missions over North Korea. That's right. How did he escape? Oh, it was just a freak of luck. They were transferring him to death row two days before his execution date. Just in time. You know, I'd do the same thing if I had two convictions of murder hanging over me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's quite a man. was such a time. <laughs> Speaking of time, oh, my gosh. Oh, can't be. If they have to hold that curtain again for me tonight, I'll just die. <laughs> I wonder why they didn't toll the cathedral bells tonight. They did. They did? Mm -hmm. Oh, you heard them. Oh. Yeah. Well, um, how come I didn't? When I'm in your arms, I'm in another world. Where are you? Listening for Bell. I think this entire affair is obviously one-sided. Obviously? You don't think I'm fool enough to marry a woman I'm in love with? So that's it. You despise me. Well, you just wait until I get you hooked. Because you don't know what it's like to be chained to somebody that you can't stand. You go out and earn a living. Oh, oh, oh that does it. Oh. <laughs> license. I won't. Oh, I forgot the dishes. Jane. What are you doing? You'll see. <laughs> Please have carried you over the threshold.
Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Let me see. Mm-mm. I'm going to let you go. Well, if you're going to make an honest woman of me, I insist on seeing the evidence. <laughs> okay. There you are. This isn't yours. It says Brett Mattoon. Your name is Murphy. I know. Well, my father's name was Mattoon. But he died, and my mother married a Mr. Murphy, so I always used Murphy. But uh, I figured I might as well make this legal, so I use my right name. Mm. Huh? <laughs> well, I was all set to be Mrs. Murphy, and now I have to be Mrs. Mattoon. Oh, you'll like Mattoon better after you get used to it. Wonderful name for Ryan. Got uh, baboon, harpoon, spit toon, June, moon. Goon. <laughs> you see? Uh oh. I'm on. Here, you pick me up. Mm -hmm. All I gotta do is go back to the hotel room and finish packing. You all set? Yep. Money, bags, passport. <laughs> Mattoon. Check the plane very carefully, sir. Takes off at midnight. I suggest you time the affair for four hours after takeoff. Why so quickly? It's a nine-hour flight. She'll turn back. Our material burns very slowly. It can't possibly be discovered until after she's passed the halfway mark. No chance of smothering out, is there? None whatever, sir, lover. It thrives on water, and no chemical carried by any aircraft in the world can affect it. I stake my reputation on that, sir. Is that all? The Conquistador carries cargo forward and aft. You want it forward, nearest the engines. So I suggest you place it in your largest piece of luggage. A small trunk would make it doubly certain. You've spoken to no one. Naturally not. How much do I owe you? We agreed on 5,000, if you remember, sir. Good evening, Mr. Murphy. Good evening, Gracias. Yo, 
Your name, Brett Murphy? That's right. You sure your name is Murphy? Well, I'm as sure as anybody can be of his own name. FBI. That's right. Captain Rivas, Police Central. Your extradition papers, Mr. Murphy. I think you'll find them all in order. I'm taking you back to the States tonight by jet. Style, huh? They want you fast. I know I can't expect much of a favor from you, but there, there's somebody I've got to call just, just to say goodbye. Gene Gurney? Yes, why? Go ahead. Thanks. Just don't tell her where you're going or how. I'm listening very carefully. What? But when? But, Brad, I don't understand. No, darling, that won't do at all. You've got to tell me. No, no, I won't tell anyone. Please. Now, listen. You wait right there. I'll be right over... Malas noticias, señorita. Yes, it's it's I'd rather not go. I, 
I, I just rather not. But darling, the arrangements are all made. Your family's expecting you. You haven't seen us as we moved to Spain. Yes, I, I know. I, I, I know. Oh, I, I'm, I'm being foolish, I suppose, but I, I, I haven't been feeling well, and, and you know how I, I dread flying. Your father will be terribly disappointed. Yes, I know. It's, it's just that... Oh, Robert. We'd be leaving Laurie all alone. For the very first time. I... I just can't bear to leave her here. So, so lonely. So lonely and so lost. Ursula. She's not alone. She's dead. Dead. And I killed her. If that's the way you wish to think of it. Don't talk about her. I'm sorry, Robert. But I, I always think of Laurie. I beg of you. Don't talk about her. Lady Leverett. The planes are made up. Would you like to go aboard or would you rather have a drink? We might as well go aboard. Hang it all I forgot to telephone. You, uh, you run along. I'll join you directly. Please don't be too long. I may have a drink first, but that shan't take a minute. Check, check. Okay. Mrs. Langer and daughter, your tickets, ma'am. Thank you. The loudspeaker will notify you when it's time to board. Mommy, first can we watch the plane? Of course, darling, for a little while. We can go up on the flight deck, huh? wonderful airplane, and because the pilots are the best in the whole world, and because God would never let an airplane fall with a good little girl like you on board. Oh, he's terrific. Thank you, Mommy. You're welcome, darling. Let's go. Thank you. 
for you? Could you please tell me, do you have a, a Brett Mattoon on your reservation list? Mattoon? Let me see, miss. Mattoon, Mattoon, Mattoon. Sorry, miss, no Mattoon list in here. Very welcome. Yes, ma'am, right away. Quite a handle for a little dame like that. Priestwood, Bergstrom, Vanetti, Elliot, Vanderbilt. That's Dr. Vanderbilt. He just inherited 25 million. interest can they have in that man? That man happens to be Dean Haltree of St. Swithin's. Dean Haltree? Why, of course. I must go and say hello to him. But, madame, you've never met the man. Oh, Tatan, my dear, if he's anybody at all, he has undoubtedly met me. She's an opera singer, isn't she? <laughs> yes, making her seventh farewell tour of America. She was born there, you know. No, no, no. No photos, please. Ah, oh, my dear Dean Haltry. What a charming surprise after all these years. Coming at such delightful time, too. Just as I am on my way to the Carnegie Hall to give the most fabulous concert of my entire career. A delightful surprise. But do let them take just one or two pictures, Miss Gallicazetti. See? Si. Well, yes, of course. C'est charmant. Well, conquist the door. Cop jet flight 400. How many more? Uh, only General Ramirez and his party. That's all. Well, I guess that's it. Let's go. All right, Mattoon. We're on our way.
clear for takeoff. speaking. We are now at an altitude of 6,000 feet and will continue climbing until we level off at an altitude of 25,000 feet. I, I heard something about him at the ticket counter. Seems he's a murderer being taken back to the States for hanging. some low tricks in my time, Stafford. But telling her is the lowest. I didn't tell her. No? You admitted that you knew her. We always keep track of American girls. It's a very funny thing. How many men we catch up to who get lonesome for American girls? Especially a pretty one. And that she is. We were gonna get married. You know about that, too? Mattoon, I know the color of your toothbrush. Jeans, though. One really decent thing that's happened to me. I don't expect you to believe this, but I'd give anything to make her happy. What are you wasting all this talk on me for? Why don't you go and tell it to someone who'd like to hear it? Thanks. Worried? You won't go very far. Oh, the poor man. Why? They're going to electrocute him. Somehow, I rather think they won't. Someone has to keep an eye on him. How'd you find out? I went to your hotel. Porter told me you'd gone to the airport. I'd like another drink, please. Steward. Yes, sir? A lady would like another drink, and I'll have a scotch and water. Thank you, sir. Right away. Why don't you uh, let him take your coat? The latest thing in fashion for a girl on the chase. <laughs> Brett, tell me what happened. Please, I have a right to know. I decided to pull out. Look, marriage is not for me. Oh, darling, don't lie to me. I saw you handcuffed to that man. 
I love you, right or wrong. I don't care what you've done. But you must trust me. Tell me about it. I'll understand. All right, I try to understand this. Two years ago, I escaped from a federal penitentiary. Well, I've got two murder convictions hanging over my head. Fred, no. I don't expect you to believe it. Nobody else does, but I'm not guilty. Tell me about it. Well, it happened right after I got out of the service. I was living in Chicago at the time, and one night I stopped by a neighborhood bar. Hello, Joe. Good evening, Mr. Mateo. Pour me a cold room, will you? Sure. How'd you make out today? Oh, I found a couple of jobs, but nothing that suited me. I can't see myself sitting behind a desk day after day. Yeah, that's not for you. Two beers. You still serving this lousy stuff? I warned you to buy our beer. came to, that gun was still in my hand, just like I'd been born with it. With a dozen cops standing around. It's so wrong. So terribly wrong. We'll fight them any way we can. Fight them? I fought them with every cent I had. I still ended up in the pen. Well, darling, we can't give up. There's too much at stake. I can't think of a better time for another drink. I still want to marry you. Right. Marry a guy that's on the way to the chair? The answer's no. Have you still got the license? Yeah, I got the license. Well, then we can be married as soon as we land. That's a Spanish license. It's not going to be any good where we're going. <laughs> Stewart. Excuse me, would you care to order dinner now? Uh, just fill those up. Yes, sir, immediately. Anything I can do? No. I'm sorry. I know I'm being very childish behaving like this. Not at all. Letters can be very touching. See, it's just I haven't seen my father since I was a little girl. His letters are all I've got. 
He's in New York? Yes. He's been waiting for me 15 years. He's written to me about all the wonderful things we're going to do together. Come, child. Let's go out and mingle with the passengers. Did we pay four fares for a stateroom in order to mingle with the passengers? I don't like it any more than you do. But one has to be democratic. Oh, how nice. Uh, here, Maria, this is for you. That's awfully sweet of you. I shall recommend you to your superior. Thank you. Let's sit here, Maria. But to marry a man who, who's condemned to death, that would be terrible for a young girl. Truly, Mr. Priestwood, I think you don't understand. You are long and happily married. I am a, a maiden lady. I assure you, my dear Mr. Priestwood, I had rather be married to a man I love for just one day, even had he died in my arms before the marriage was consummated, than have to live all my life alone and with no one to love but myself. I'm sorry, uh, I was quite wrong. But we can't be certain they want to be married, my dear lady. At least we can't be sure that he does. Oh, but he does, Dean Haltry. It shines in his eyes like, like a fever. Oh. Well, of course, he'd have to have the permission of the officer who was with him in custody. Uh, uh, which is he? Oh, uh, down there, uh, on the left, sitting on the aisle. He he's sipping his drink. I'm sorry, Miss Bridgebaker Hooden, but I, I really can't go about soliciting, so to speak. Only if you think it's the right thing, and if you're up to making arrangements on your own, I shall be only too happy to perform any part I may be called on for. Dean Haltry, you may count on it. You will be called on, and the good Lord will bless you for it. <laughs> May I, please? Certainly. There's something very important that I must talk to you about. My dear Maria, I'm not at all interested in condemned murderers. Now, let's enjoy our trip such as it is, and not be distracted by convicts. Uh, steward? Stuart? Mommy? Mm hmm? Is that the Wicked Witch? What'd you say, dear? I said, is that the Wicked Witch? Laura, how could you say such a thing? Yes. Yes, indeed, I am the Wicked Witch. And when it comes your best time, I shall prove it to you. I shall sing you a lullaby. And it will make you dream of good fairies. Dancing in the midnight dew. <laughs> oh, madam, you have a very perceptive child. Well, she's certainly very forward <laughs> and extremely shrill. <laughs> oh. We are now 300 miles off the coast. We are flying at 25,000 feet. I don't care what people think. I only know that I love you. Hello. This is Miss Gurney, Mr. Stafford. How do you do? Glad to know you. Oh, uh, sorry to break in like this, but something just came up. Miss Hooten, Miss Gurney, Mr. Mattoon. How do you do? Oh, charmed. Most happy indeed, you poor dears. This little lady's been worried since you came aboard. She wants to know if you two really got a Spanish wedding license. Yeah, we got one. Well, you see, she's been planning a wedding. A wedding? Of course. And the Reverend Mr. Haltry, who is Dean of St. Swithin's, and what a splendid man he is, has agreed to perform the ceremony. And you'll have to have a maid of honor and a best man, and... Oh, yes, goodness me. We'll have to find a, a ring somewhere. Well, that's it. It's all fixed. That is, if we can find somebody who'll have him. Would you have him, miss? Oh, yes. Oh, 
splendid. Now you'll, you'll have to dress. Oh, yes, Madame Gallagher's at his stateroom. And I have so many other things to do, so many arrangements to make. So if you'll excuse me. Oh, oh wait a minute, Stafford. There isn't going to be any wedding. I love her very much, Jean, but it's wrong, you marry a guy that's going to get knocked off. You want to end up being a murderer's widow? But you're not a murderer. You're what they say you are. You're what they say you are, and that's the way it is, and I'm not going to let you get mixed up in it. But darling, it's no use arguing. My dears, there's going to be a wedding. Won't you be a darling and act as the bride's handmaiden? And you, sir, won't you help, too? Oh, and, and, and you, Madame Galligazetti, the bride will need somewhere to dress. And that powder room is so stuffy. We were wondering, that is, some of the passengers and I, if you would be kind enough to let us use your, your stateroom. Yes, of course she may. Oh, Madame Gary Gazzetti, the Lord will bless you for this. I hope so. It will be for the first time. <laughs> Madame? Yes? Is that all you wish of me? Why, uh, why, yes, of course. You mean to say that this is going to be a wedding with no music, no singing? Well, Madame Galligazetti, it would be wonderful if we could have some music, but no singing. You look lovely, dear. How can I ever thank you? Just be happy. Take over, sir. Yes, for a while. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons present are now come to be joined. Now, will you join your right hands together, please? And say after me, I, Brett, take thee, Jean, to my wedded wife. I, Brett, take thee, Jean, for my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or worse. For better or for worse. In sickness or in health. In sickness or in health. To love and to cherish. To love and cherish. Until death us do part. Until death do us part. And Jean, will you say after me? I, Jean, take thee, Brett, to my wedded husband. I, Jean. Take thee, Brett, to my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Have you the ring?
when you take the ring, say after me, with this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. I now pronounce you man and wife. Let us pray. Merciful Father, in whose eyes all men are good and all women pure, we ask thy blessing and thy protecting love on behalf of those who have this night become one until death do part them. We are... never have left her there in all that darkness. I wish I could be with her. I wish I could die. You shall. And so shall I, each in our time. But I must ask you to control yourself, Ursula. I shall go to the bar for a drink. Try to sleep. minutes in there and you'd have flipped. Now sit down here and tell me all about yourself. Why should I tell you my troubles? Well, because it's doctor's orders. Besides, collecting troubles is my hobby. Some people go in for stamps, some for old coins, but me, I come from a long line of trouble collectors. Where do I start, doctor? Well, in the beginning, naturally. Well, when I was very young, my mother deserted my father for someone else. Then we moved to Paris. Ever since then, I've been dreaming of the day when I can go back to New York, see my father, and give him all the love he's been denied for so many years. I guess that doesn't make much sense to you, does it? No, well, you're wrong. Dreams always make sense. Every decent thing on earth was once a dream that belonged to someone. I've had one myself since I was a little boy, to be a doctor. I'm on my way to New Guinea right now to build a hospital for the natives. Well, don't look so surprised, Jim. Nothing's impossible when your name is Vanderbird. that lending your clothes was quite enough. I had no idea you should also surrender our stateroom. Where else could they have any privacy? Privacy, indeed. In four more hours, you'll forget all about it. <laughs> Not if I get a stiff back from this barbarous seat, I shan't. Or if I catch cold. It's positively chilly in here. I feel indeed that I am catching a cold. If you don't try so hard, the cold may escape.
There's so little time. Why does something so wonderful have to end so quickly? Well, it's not over yet. I'm not going to give up without a fight. You just can't let people kill you without a fight. What are you going to do with that gun? When you got a gun, it's easy to figure out a plan to go along with it. When we land in New York, there's going to be at least a dozen cops waiting for us. So I figure we're not going to land there. Where will we land? I'm going to cut off all communications, force the pilot to fly us to Canada. Inland from Montreal, there's a small airport. It was used as a training field during the war. There won't be any policemen there. And what about Stafford? This will take care of him. Supposing something goes wrong. I may need help. Can you handle a gun? I think I can, yes. I think you can, too. How far are we from New York right now? Well, I figure we're about, about three hours. Put your arms around me. I'm a little scared. <laughs> Brett, hmm? I smell smoke. Yeah. Water, please. Right away, sir. Thank you.
What was that? It was you snorting like a buffalo. Oh, oh ridiculous. It's awfully stuffy in here. Aren't we all? Maria, Maria, please wake up. Yes, yes, I can hear you. It's too hot in here. What does one do for ventilation? Just call a steward, madame. I'll smash a window. Oh, ridiculous. Yes, madame. It's too hot. Did you hear me? It's too hot in here. Make it cooler at once. Yes, madame, right away. Yes, it, it is getting a little warm in here, isn't it, steward? Yes, sir. These uh, air conditioners, sir. I would take care of it immediately. XP-1. Come in, XP-1. This is Flight 400, Captain Reyes. XP-1. Come in, XP-1. This is Flight 400, Captain Reyes. Fire in baggage compartment. Automatic extinguishers functioning. Continuing on course, 25,000 feet. Request all seagoing vessels in area be alerted. Request relief air patrol and escort. This is Captain Reyes speaking. A fire has been discovered in the baggage compartment. The baggage compartment is sealed off from the rest of the plane. It's equipped with chemical fire extinguishers, which are now functioning. We have every hope of keeping the fire from spreading. We are in constant ah, radio no, contact with Idlewild Airport in New York. This plane is a fire! 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 fire, fire. Be calm, everybody! Indeed. How can fire burn metal? It's impossible. Oh, nothing to worry on that score, my dears. Oh. Please return to your seats. Please, please return to your seats. And just relax. Everything will be all right. Go on, please. You say you've flown planes like this before. Not exactly this type, but this big. We got a chance. Not a very good one. With all the fuel we're carrying, this plane can't stand too much heat. <laughs> I'll take that gun, Matoon. I said, give me the gun. Yes, I know. I uh, thought perhaps if you'd let me hold your little girl. I don't mean to intrude, I assure you, but she's so very young, I thought I might comfort her. Of course, I, I'm very grateful. Darling, this nice man wants to hold you for a little while, hmm? Okay. anything should happen, you go to heaven. Everybody's happy in heaven. <laughs> hey there. Things are never as bad as they make them sound. I hope it goes down. I'd rather it would. I don't talk like that. that that's real crazy talk. No, I mean it. Don't you see? It was meant to be this way. 
and I'll never live to see the day when I'm without you. <laughs> Alfredo. Captain Reyes reports that the navigator has died. We have emergency life rafts to launch the moment the plane comes to rest. Each raft is self-inflating and adequately equipped with water, food, and emergency Radio. <laughs> Flight 400. Flight 400, will you come in, please? Captain Reyes, will you come in, please? Captain Reyes! Captain Reyes! Come in, Captain Reyes! Captain Reyes, will you identify yourself? Flight 400. Flight 400, will you come in, please? Captain Reyes, will you come in, please? Captain Reyes, will you... I went up front to find out. Man, clear the ship's gonna go in the drink. Why well, he's dead? Watch that control. All right. <coughs> it's an automatic pilot. <coughs> I'm going down below. What about the plane? It'll fly itself.
get the captain up. Something very new, completely painless. After it puts you to sleep, death comes so easily. That's why I planted it there. That it was mine. There are over 80 people aboard this plane who will die, just as I will. We're really very fortunate, you know. That's the most beautiful experience we'll ever know. I learned that from Laurie. She's waiting for me in heaven. You heard what he said. Get upstairs. Chalk it up, Stafford. Murder number three. Too bad you weren't around for the first two, and we wouldn't be stuck in this miserable crate. <laughs> you saved my life. I'll take that gun. It's up to you to get this plane into New York. You're easy to please, Stafford. First you want my life, now you want miracles. <sighs> Gotta get some fresh air in this plane. I'll take it down to 6,000 feet to relieve the pressure. When I give you the word, you bust up in a couple of portholes. Good idea. Suffocated. <coughs> going to die, aren't we? Just like the rest of them back there. Not if I can help it. I'm not going to Canada. What? It cost us an extra two hours flying time. The poison gas we've all been breathing, two hours could save the lives of 80 people aboard. There's one life that won't save Brett. I'll have to take my chances. <laughs> Flight 400. Flight 400, will you come in, please? Captain Reyes, are you there, Captain Reyes? Captain, please come in and identify yourself. XP-1, this is flight 400. Flight 400, give me my bearings, please. <laughs> What is it? Is he 
dead? Yes. Take it easy, you'll upset the rest of the passengers. Captain Reyes, do you receive me? XP-1, this is Flight 400. I said, give me my bearings, please. Captain Reyes. Are you there, Captain Reyes? Please come in and identify yourself. XP-1. XP-1, come in, please. XP-1. Far to go. From here on, it's anybody's guess. The transmitter's dead. We're out of touch with the whole world. All we can do is hope for the best. Some poison fumes filtering through the ventilators. Poison gas, poison gas. Where do you think you're going? Come to oh, sit down. The poison gas has gotten into your bloodstreams. Unnecessary excitement will speed up your blood pressure and carry the poison to your heart that much faster. Mr. Stafford. Of course, you're familiar with the life preservers. Yes, I am. Will you be good enough to help me instruct the passengers? Of course. If you would take the people at the rear of the cabin, I will show these. Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Señoras y señores, su atención, por favor. In front of you is this flat. Inside of it is your life jacket. Really? We should have parachutes. What a scandal. Please take out your life jackets and put them on like this. First, you place the jacket over your head and then the straps on your arms. But how can one of those fasten on a little girl? It'd be best if you're holding your arms. Don't they have any fit me? Oh, much better than that, darling. We have a great big growing up one for you. Buddy, I'm frightened. No, it's just a precaution. He'll probably never get a chance to use it. They, they can't let anything happen to us. Not now. I've waited too long. We've all waited for something. You don't realize. You don't know what this means to me. All my life, yes, all my life, I've been waiting for the day when the world would recognize my talent. 
when I would earn the right to sing at Carnegie Hall. And now, I could face death like anyone else if I had never earned the right. I really believe you. That's why I'm going to tell you something. I never before wanted you to know. You haven't earned the right to appear in Carnegie Hall. But you have earned something that's far more important. The respect of a man who wants to pay you for those best years you so freely and willingly gave him. It wasn't the world that finally woke up, madame. It was Charles Harrington. He's the man. He arranged for your appearance. What? Yes. No. Yes, sir. Flight 400 has been sighted by the Coast Guard. Air Sea Rescue Plane X-28 will endeavor to intercept. I have it, sir. Stack all incoming planes, clear all runways for emergency landing. Yes, sir. Flight 76. Flight 76 from Havana. puts us just north of New York, so those lights down below should be Connecticut. Next stop, Idlewild. I don't know too much about their landing pattern, but nothing we can do about that. I saw lights. That's right, Stafford. Get back to your seat. I'm lowering in. Keep flying. I'll still give the orders. This is an emergency landing. If we ground loop coming in, you won't be alive to give orders. The approach lights. I right, stand clear. I got work to do. Landing gear. We'll get going. All right, Matoon. Policemen, firemen, a big crowd. I'm going to make a break for it. Brett, don't, please. It's my only chance. Where will I find you? Check the morgue first. If I'm not there, I'll put an ad in the New York Times. I'll sign Jack, you sign Jill.
have to do this, Matoon. Why didn't you give him a chance? He gave you one. He saved your life. They would have shot him down out there before he knew what hit him. It wasn't Brett. Why do you care? When I burn, I want that squealer sitting right in my lap. Nice character. Oh, he's a sweetheart. Bring your prisoner over to the ambulance for identification. I can hardly wait to see his face. Come on. and the plane at one point turned rather too warm. But after that, there was an excellent draft, and the trip was altogether delightful. Oh. June! It's so wonderful to see you. It's been so long, too long. This is my father. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Well, shall we go? Oh, Brent. All right, you dirty double-crossing fink. Come out from behind the dame. Of all the dumb, stupid, fat-headed jerks. That ain't the guy that squealed. You can't identify this man? Identify him? Sure I can identify him. That's the chump we framed. Lieutenant. Denied and thanks. Denied. You're a lucky guy, Matoon. It's my guess that you'll be a free man. Quite a guy. Yeah. Quite a guy.